What is up, guys? That is not my intro. That is somebody else's. My name is Silas. It's been every day EDC, and it still is in the beginning of the episode. So we're a little off. We have an unboxing slash truck dumps to do with you guys today. I'm going to try to spice up the truck dumps, like, every now and then do something just different, I guess. I don't know. Maybe keep it entertaining, okay? So this is a little box. This is a big box. And this is an itty bitty box. And this is a card. They sent me a card. That was so nice of them. I wonder if they personalized it. It is a thank you. So this is pretty cool. Um, that's pretty cool. Uh, and it's actually like a high quality thank you. That's like nice. I don't know about the thought. I didn't really read it. So it's not that cool apparently. I'll read it eventually. All right, so this is unboxing, then we'll do a truck dump. So I'm going to try to do this fast. I don't know how fast this is going to go, though, because this is a first for me. <laughs> Here we go. This is something from Olight. I think this is hilarious. Does it work? I think it's supposed to. It gives off, like, enough light to maybe see, like, if you had a zit and it's, like, pitch black, you might be able to be like, yo, I got you. Got it. <laughs> Pretty hilarious, though, right? It was free. The next. Clearly, this is from Olight, by the way. This whole package. No, I did not get the knife. And I kind of regret not getting that thing. That thing actually looked good. Um, everything that it had, and I kind of didn't pay attention to it, to it till afterwards, just looked actually really, really good. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is a flashlight with no batteries. Holy shit. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Aha! It does come with batteries, but it comes with a plastic cover. And it takes AA batteries. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is the Olight. I think it's just like the... I think there's only two modes. This is the Olight 5C. Yeah, it's just a high and a low. Story of my life, right? Highs and lows. So this is the 5T right next to the 3T. You guys really can't tell the difference, can you? There you go. The 5T is a little bit more of a beast, and it does give off quite a bit more light. Whereas the 3T, although that looks like it gives off more light, the battery in here kind of sucks. They got like some generic Chinese battery. But 5T, 3T. T. Pretty cool. All right, but that's not why. This is actually like a package that I got. And some of you have jumped on uh, the deal that I sent out. It has nothing to do with me. It was just one that I happened upon, and I thought it was a good deal. Then again, I don't know what's a good deal for flashlights because I'm not a big flashlight guy. I mean, $600 for this little guy is pretty cool. Didn't pay $600. You guys are silly. So without showing you the knife, I needed a knife to open this, but the unboxing or the other thing comes afterwards. I get so distracted easily. You guys got to be so annoyed sometimes where I'm like, God, is it? All right, so this is pretty cool. They got a pretty intense cover here. They got a pretty intense light with a clip for your belt. And then I'm assuming this is a charging cord. Are you like telling me how to open this thing? Like, how do you open this thing? All right. Oh, there's more. And then there's more. There is more. Oh, it comes like a little lanyard thing. All right. Truck is a disaster now. Really nice box, though. This is the Olight. Well, no kidding, right? Um, the Olight. Holy smokes. The M M2R Pro Warrior. And it 
rightfully so it's not charged, but let's just double check if they don't. I mean, there's got to be a rechargeable. Ah, see? Plastic tab. No more. I do have to charge this, but this thing's pretty cool. So the weight on this guy is like six or seven ounces. It's like the equivalent of a large pocket knife. Oh, sorry. So three is strobe. I'll have to play with it, but this thing's pretty sweet blinded the shit out of myself just now and probably you guys sorry if there's anybody with friggin epilepsy or something that watches this that's not cool um let's take a look here i'm not in too much of a rush you guys might be but i am not it's all in a different language odd all right i just want to tell you guys a different uh Okay, so they have different functions. Da, 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 da. Change brightness level. When the flashlight is on, press and hold the side switch, and it will, s and it will, starting from the present brightness level, automatically cycle through low, medium, two, medium one, and high mode. So, okay, that's cool. That's cool. All right. Moonlight mode. When the flashlight is off. Press and hold the side switch for over one second to access moonlight mode. If the memorized mode is moonlight, simply press R. So that is moonlight. That's like, let's go outside and like look at stuff, I guess. But not use too much of it. Strobe is uh, quickly triple click. All right. Turbo and return. Fast double click on the side switch to enter turbo and double click again to return. So this is turbo. That's turbo, apparently. That's high. Alright. And then you could lock this. It has a little button back here, so if you just want to do a temporary look, like, there you go. Um, produces different output settings by pressing lightly or hard on the tail switch. Please refer to the following configurations. Half press for turbo. Hard press for strobe. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. confused. I'll have to play with it, guys. So that's turbo. That's low. Medium 2. Medium 1. High. I feel like high and turbo are kind of the same thing. But either way, I wanted a good flashlight. I told you guys about it because, um, you know, I'm, I'm at work and I see... Like, my ma I was actually jealous one day. My maintenance guy comes up, and they were looking at something, and then he looks at me, and we had to look underneath something. So I bust out my Olight 3T, you know, I'm like, I'm prepared, I'm ready. What does he do? He busts out this Lord knows what, but next thing you know, I can't see. This thing was bright. It was large. Don't get me wrong. Charging. Three, two, one. Charging. I think. Am I charging? I can't tell. Let me read one more instruction. I might cut through this if it's like obnoxious when I go to edit it, but charging. When the flashlight is on, don't change brightness, I'm stupid. There's an LED indicator somewhere. A very low LED. It's red. Red means charging. Got it. All right. Now we're off to see the wizard. The wonderful wizard. All right. So, 
the what's in your pocket today. You guys already know I got my barrel fulcrum. I no longer have my Olight 3T. Now I have my Olight M2R. I might have some more coming. And I kind of don't want to hear it, guys. If you guys are flashlight people, feel free to recommend some stuff. But don't be like, yo, Olight, so entry-level stuff. Well, we all got to start somewhere. And I'm happy with my purchase, so don't try to knock me down. You know what I mean? But you guys are going to see this unboxing eventually. This is the we no idea what the name of this was. It's one hell of a weird name, but it is a tactile turn pen made out of titanium. Just got that with a fidget spinner on the top and a window breaker. Not the most convenient. I've already had this in my pocket. It doesn't sit very well in the pocket, in the pants pocket anyways. And this is sharp, like this crown. So like if it's in your pants pocket, like I'm gonna stab the shit out of myself. I just know it, but it makes me pretty happy. So I'm carrying it. You guys already know about the barrel fulcrum. I got a flashlight. This, today's different though, guys. So my unboxing knife for the day was the CJRB Scoria. So this thing is awesome. Not a review. It's awesome. Um, it's held up, no back and forth, no up and down. Centering's perfect. I can reverse flick it. I can thumb flick it. And you can flip or tab it just fine, right? Ergonomically, it's okay, but it's cool because it's so thin, but it's contoured and kind of wide. And then you have this choke up spot right here. So this thing, while being thin and not going to be the most ergonomic for some heavy, hardcore cutting stuff, if you had to break down some boxes and everything, this is pretty cool. And actually, as it stands right now, this is probably, if I had to pick a budget knife of the year, it's going to be the CJRB Scorpion. Um, it's just killing it. Uh, I think they just paid attention to everything so right, and I'm pretty sure this is AR RPM 9 steel. I gotta go back and take a look at the price. If this price is coming in at over 60 or 70, then we're gonna have an issue going forward because this thing would absolutely be and titanium pocket clip. Hey, there's five bucks on your cost. Um, but if this if this was coming in below 60, which I honestly don't think it was, I think the AR RPM 9 alone bumps it up to 55, 60. <sighs> Stop talking in circles. If this was below 60, I believe nothing can touch this price wise or budget knife of the year wise. If this is above 60, unfortunately for it, I know Savivi's got some massive stuff coming out towards the end of the year. And yes, they may be more expensive because Savivi's jacked up their prices by about 15% since they came out last year. Well, not since they came out, but since last year. Um, and it's not jacked up the prices. Like, you don't pay more for the Praxis. You're just paying more for the newer models. But the point being is, Savivi may knock this off. They got some really cool models coming out. This is what I wanted to talk about, and this video is already getting really long. So, I'm going to see if I can add some pictures, because I did do an unboxing last night without videotaping it, but it was like 1 o'clock in the morning. This, ladies and gentlemen, is my Para 3. Has an MXG deep carry pocket clip. Is that MXG? Yeah, it's MXG. Deep carry pocket clip on there. This, if you're gonna ask me where these scales come from, the only thing I can tell you is France. It's somewhere in France. Um, did come with a backspacer, so it all looks really cool, right? The action looks great, right? Well, Let's just say these scales almost met a fatal demise last night at 1.30 in the morning. Um, I was, I got them out and I'm like, dude, I gotta check this out. I was so stoked for these scales. I've been wanting to carry my pair of three for the longest. And I, you know, I got it because I, I wanted to mod it. I wanted to make it my own. And, you know, it, I, I wanted to get something specific, but something so unique that, you know, it's, it's different, and I've never seen these before. No, these are not carbon fiber. I wish they were. These are actually like acrylic, resin, not acrylic, it's some sort of resin, which is probably acrylic. I mean, so here's the deal. This shows, like literally shows, way better on pictures and camera than this, 
than it feels. This is a knife, like, I don't know how long I'm going to keep these scales. I may, it may grow on me. Maybe I'll get over it. But in the beginning, I could not center the freaking thing. And then once I got it centered, I could not get the action to do any of this. Like, the action was stupid without having any blade play whatsoever. So, it was so frustrating, right? So then I had this new black hardware that I was going to put in. As you can see, my stop pin's freaking back to the normal stop pin. Um, I couldn't use the black hardware because these scales require deeper screws for the pocket clip. It was kind of like a little debacle, right? But, I mean, it ended up, like, okay. Like, I actually don't mind the little bit of silver that's showing through there. Like, I think this just does look sick. And if I was watching the video, I'd be like, yo, that looks sick. Problem is, like I said, I was super frustrated. Could not get the action. And before taking it apart, the action was awesome. Okay. This morning I woke up and I tried one more thing. It has something to do with how tight these screws are in relationship to these, but also how perfectly centered the pivot is. So, like, if the pivot's skewed a little bit, like, Metal Complex is like a paper trick, right? You put the paper in between there, you loosen it up. Well, it wasn't working on the one side, but this is a dual-sided pivot. Like, I have to use screws on both sides of this. So what I ended up doing is I loosened up all the screws, I forced the blade over to the side using the piece of paper that it was not favoring, tightened up the pivot, tightened up the body screws tighter than I was comfortable with, because remember, this is like a, a resin, it feels almost like plastic. Um, and so I tightened everything up tighter than I was comfortable, loosened up the pivot, took out the paper, tightened up the pivot again, and it actually found a sweet spot this morning. I'm like, okay. So I got everything fixed. I locked tight of the pivot screws, so I'm not really too worried about it. It's kind of hard for me to like not critique this, right? Because after I found the sweet spot last night, I went to bear down on the grip, and I felt something shift in the handle. Well, the only way I could find the sweet spot before making that adjustment this morning was loosening up these screws. These screws were so loose, the scales were starting to shift, but it was weird because they didn't shift at all times. It was only when you bore down on the knife. Um, so there's that. Second, see how shiny this is? It feels like it looks, okay? This thing is pretty slick. Um, like, if if my hands were wet or, like, lotion-y or something, this thing would probably pop out of my hands. But the PM2s or PM3s contouring and everything else really works. So, mm, give or take, right? It just kind of feels... This is the sad part. So I got it all together. I'm happy with everything. I think it looks sick nasty. I was gonna like do an acid wash to the blade, you know, kind of make it match a little bit more. And then I like bore down on it and I felt the scale shift, but also bearing down on it. And like, there's no flex. You obviously have liners, you have a backspacer. But it reminded me of the first experience I had with the bug out. My first experience I had with the bug out was like, before the CF Elite version was like, Feel like I'm gonna break this knife, right? Now, in hindsight, like I actually kind of like the bug out. I think the bug out's a really good knife. Um, but <clears throat> your first experience with that, you're like, I don't know, <sighs> right? That was kind of how I felt about this. Now, these scales were not cheap, okay? Um, that I think that's the other part of this is these scales were definitely not cheap. Nor do they kind of look cheap in pictures and camera, right? I mean, they look really nice. Even in person, it looks really nice. In hand, it doesn't feel as nice as it looks, and it kind of feels cheap. Um, that's why I might not keep it. I prefer the heft. Maybe that's my problem, is I prefer the steel liners. I prefer, or the steel frames. I prefer the, the, the titanium frames. Actually, I don't go anywhere else. Like, I don't have my Carta anything. I don't have G10 anything. If I have G10, it's, like, because I don't choose to. Like, on the Protec Strider or the Protec SMG, there's G10 on one side. I don't choose that. If I could, I would change that out. That's just a preference of mine, though. So maybe that's where this is coming from. I don't know. Either way, this is my new pair of three. This is an S45 VN. Um... 
even funnier story. I don't even know if you guys are going to get to see the unboxing on this because of the switch of and everything. But real quick, so I bought the S45VN Para 3 because, as you guys know, my Para, or not my Para, my Spydercos, I'm trying to modify. I'm trying to, like, make them my own. And then they actually mean a lot to me. It's kind of like Hinder. Like, you can make it your own, and then it means something to you. So... I didn't want to do that with a base model, though, because I have a YouTube channel. I'm like, I can justify, you know, getting, like, a different steel. Don't need it, but I want it, and it makes me happy, so why not? <laughs> Problem was, I got the S45VN. I'm like, yes, Sprint Run S45VN, and I got it for a decent price, and I was so confused at why I got it for such a cheap price. I'm like, holy crap. It's their new steel. Like, they're using S45VN this year, or in a couple months, or I think they've already released some in S45VN. So, like, I did, it's not special. It's still special. It's S45. I'm glad to have it. Um, yeah, but, but as soon as I found out it was a production thing, I'm like, ah, oh, oh, man. It still makes me happy, though. Like, it, it's, again, mindset. Nothing to really do with the blade steel. So those of you that are watching at this point, nothing to do with the blade steel. You guys already know me. It has nothing to do with that. I won't notice a freaking difference, to be honest. I won't. Won't do it. Won't notice. But it just makes me happy. Sorry for the long truck dump slash unboxing today, but I hope you guys were entertained. My name is Tyler. This has been Everyday EDC. You guys stay sharp. Stay safe. And have a great freaking rest of your day, guys.